subscribe. Click on the bell. Like, comment, share. Electrolysis of aqueous solution. Let's refresh your knowledge on electrolysis on molten lead to bromide. Fill in the information table. Press enter when you're done. In molten lead to bromide, there are only two freely moving ions available. Thus, each ion will be attracted to the specific electrode and being discharged. If aqueous solution is used instead, will the electrolysis products of aqueous solution be the same as the electrolysis products of molten electrolyte? Let's find out. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to Identify cations and anions in an aqueous solution and describe the electrolysis of an aqueous solution. Click on the next button to continue. Ions of an ionic compound in solid state are in fixed positions. They are not freely moving. Thus, if attached to electrolytic cell, the ammeter will not show any readings. What happened to the ionic compound when dissolved in water? What will happen to the solution when undergo electrolysis? Now look at this close up. Water is added to sodium chloride crystals. Now the ions disassociate and can move freely. The water molecule disassociates into hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. The sodium chloride molecule disassociates into sodium ion and chloride ion. These can be shown in an equation called disassociation equation. Now, how many types of cations and anions are together in sodium chloride solution? In molten lead to bromide. When heated up, the ions disassociate into lead 2 ions and bromide ions. The disassociation can be shown in disassociation equation. From the disassociation equation, it clearly can be seen that there is one type of cation, that is lead 2 ions, and one type of anion, that is bromide ion. When sodium chloride crystals dissolve in water, they disassociate into sodium ions and chloride ions. The dissociation can be shown in dissociation equation. But that is not all. Do you remember what do you use to dissolve the crystals? Yes, water. And water molecule dissociate as well. From the dissociation equations, it clearly can be seen that there are two types of cation, that is sodium ion and hydrogen ion, and two types of anion, that is chloride ion and hydroxide ion. What happens to these ions in electrolysis process? Now, let us use information table to identify the cations and the anions present in a given solution. Use the information table to guide you. The first example is given as guidance. Press enter when you are done. Electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate solution. Copper 2 sulfate solution consists of copper 2 ions, sulfate ions, hydrogen ions, and hydroxide ions. What happened to these ions when the switch is closed? Let's find out. Let's investigate electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate solution. First, you have to label the diagram by answering some questions. Click on the question mark button for question. Click on the check button to check your answer.
click on the next button to continue. Now, let's close the switch and find out what happened to the ions. As electric current passes through the solutions, all cations, copper 2 and hydrogen ions move to cathode. All anions, sulfate ions and hydroxide ions move to anode. What happens to ions at the electrode? There are two ions attracted to anode, hydroxide ions and sulfate ions. Only one will be discharged. In this case, the hydroxide ions are selectively discharged. Each hydroxide ion releases an electron to form water and oxygen gas. Bubbles of colorless gas can be seen at the anode. If the gas is collected, can you suggest a suitable test to determine the gas? Now, let's take a look at the cathode. There are two ions attracted to cathode. Copper 2 ions and hydrogen ions. Only one will be discharged. In this case, the copper 2 ions are selectively discharged. Each copper 2 ions accept two electrons to form copper atom. Reddish-brown solid is formed at the cathode. Click on the next button to continue. Now, let's organize our information in the analysis table. Fill the table. Press enter when you are done. Click on the Next button to continue. From the information gathered, let us write the half equation for electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate solution. First, at the cathode. At the cathode, each copper 2 ions accept two electrons to become copper atom. Now type in the half equation. Press Enter to check your answer. At the anode, each hydroxide ions release an electron to form water molecules and oxygen gas. Now type in the half equation. Press enter to check your answer. Let's investigate the electrolysis of dilute sulfuric acid. Have your information table ready and watch this animation. In electrolysis dilute sulfuric acid, there are hydrogen ions, hydroxide ions and sulfate ions present in the solution. Only hydrogen ions attracted to the cathode. At the cathode, each hydrogen ion will accept one electron and becomes hydrogen atom. Two hydrogen atoms combine to form hydrogen molecule. Hence. Bubbles of colorless gas can be seen. If the gas is collected and tested with a burning splinter, pop sound can be heard and the burning splinter extinguishes. At the anode, hydrogen ions and sulfate ions attracted to anode, but only hydroxide ions are selectively discharged to form water molecules and oxygen gas. If the gas is collected and tested with a glowing splinter, the glowing splinter will glow brightly. Fill in the information table. Press Enter to check your answer.
in this lesson, you have learned that the presence of water results in two types of cations, metallic cation and hydrogen ion, and two types of anions, non-metallic anion of salt and hydroxide ion in an electrolyte of aqueous solution. Two different types of cations move towards the cathode. Only one cation will be selectively discharged at the cathode. At the cathode, the cation will accept electrons to become an atom. Two different types of anions move towards the anode. Only one anion will be selectively discharged at the anode. And at the anode, the anion will release electrons to become an atom. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon.